Speak, God. I always love reading K. Arthur because she always seems like she's got such a complete picture. You get the scripture, you get the word, you get the application, the intention, the direction. You get Jesus word for word, literally walking through the words that seem to have inspired her and God has conspired in her heart to share with us. That to me is awesome. Both taste good. <laughs> Speak, God. I love it. When you're wondering if God is enough, how are you doing, really doing? I would love to knock on your front door and have you invite me in for a cup of coffee and a chat. But since time and distance keep us from doing that, this book, this book must be the next best thing. If we could just spend some time together, when we got past the, hi, how are you? I would want to know, how are you doing, really doing? How are you doing on the inside? Are you hurting or feeling like a failure? Are you exhausted, tired of what seems like a rat race through the same old maze of life, day in and day out? Are you fighting a battle with disappointment, depression, discouragement? Are you feeling unloved or unlovable? Are you questioning God? Wondering why he has allowed things to be the way they are? Maybe you can't even admit this to yourself or to others for fear they won't understand. Is there anger in your heart because of some excruciating pain or bitter disappointment? Because you have lost someone or because your life has not been a normal life? Because you've been rejected, abused, neglected, or unloved? Does the future scare you? Are you wondering about your job, <laughs> your health, cancer, heart problems, your children? Are you wondering how you are going to care for your parents? How you are going to provide for your family? What will happen in your old age? Are you worrying? Anxious because you may have lost your job? Or because you can't find work? Worried about the kids? About how they'll turn out? About what they are being exposed to? what they might get into, drugs, immorality, suicide, or maybe all this, or maybe all is well, but you want to go deeper with God. You want a greater consistency of devotion to your Lord Jesus Christ. You want your life to be different, less commercial, more centered on your Lord and the eternal things. You want your life to have eternal significance. You want to be used by him more than you have been in the past. Whatever your situation, wherever you are, the answer is always the same. God knows your plight, your state. He knows exactly where you are and what you're going through. He knows and he wants to give you a future and a hope. Because of this, his solution is always an eternal one, an all-sufficient one. But if you miss what I'm saying or if you pass it off, you're going to miss the answer to the void, to the hurt, to the disappointment, the fear, or desires that I have mentioned above. The answer is found in a verse of scripture. A child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9, 6. God has given you Jesus, his very own son, and in giving you Jesus, he has put the government of your life on his shoulders. No matter what your situation, what your feelings or desires, you have Jesus as your wonderful counselor. Where are you running for help? Don't run anywhere unless your wonderful counselor tells you to. Then check out all you hear from your counselor or wherever he told you to go with him, Jesus. He is there to guide you, to sustain you, to care for you. He is there to govern your life. And he can because he is the mighty God. Sovereign in control of all. Not permitting any accidents in your life. 
He is filtering every aspect of your life. And the things that concern you most pass through his omnipotent fingers of love. All that goes into your life will eventually work together for your good and his glory. It will be used to make you like him. And if you will but cling to this in faith, on the day in which you see him face to face, you will have no regrets. Taken from Romans 8, 28 through 39. Read it. Just remember, you have an eternal father and you can snuggle in his all-sufficient arms. He can crawl in daddy's lap and just sit there. He is the father who is always there, always ready to listen, always able to help, and always wanting your best and seeing that you get it. He is never too busy, never plays favorites with his other children, and is always impartial. If you want to be mightily used by him in his kingdom, he will see that it happens as long as you listen to him, as long as you obey him and serve him without a divided heart. The problem is, we have looked elsewhere for our help and consolation. We have not allowed him to be our all in all. We have taken the government of our lives off his shoulders and we have turned to the arm of the flesh. Are you anxious, troubled, tormented? He is your Prince of Peace. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in him. Trust in him. Peace will reign as long as you obediently cast all your care upon him. 1 Peter 5.7 It's not being anxious for even one thing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, make your request known unto him. When you do, his peace will guard your heart and mind. Philippians 4, 6, 7. So as we end our little chat, let me just remind you to place your trust upon his shoulders and turn your life over to your wonderful counselor, mighty God, eternal father and prince of peace, who has the answer to every question, the solution to every problem, the wisdom for every decision. I will put my trust in him. You know, it's funny because people often say, do, pretend or contend that they trust the Lord. But just like K. Arthur said, you know, when someone comes and lives with you, do they see you seeking Jesus for the answers to your problems or to your choices that you make? My wife has discovered that I do not move on any major thing that she can see without first sitting down and praying and then considering my devotionals, my Bible reading, and lots of things before we committed to prayer and then we asked God for an answer. Now, I do prepare the environment around it, so to speak, by looking to see if God hasn't already spoken to me about it. If he hasn't already somehow inspired me and prepared me that day for making a decision of some major importance to my life. Because I don't want to move forward on anything. I don't want to do anything unless first I check with God because he's in control of my life. And so he knows better what's going to happen tomorrow than I know what's going to happen today. So I'm excited to go to him and ask him, what do you want, Lord? What is the best thing for me in this situation? How can I better serve you in what I'm praying about doing? And God, as my wife can testify, has always come through and much to her aggravation when I have said things that I've said no to that she may have come to me and said she wants to do something or she may have some idea about I may say no and then share with her the scriptures why and the humorous part is the next day she reads the same thing in her devotional There's only one reason, not because I'm wise, but because I chose to turn back and ask God for the answer before I replied to her of the concern or care or choices that she wanted to make. If you do that, God will lead you day by day, step by step. And then not only will you hear God speak, but God will speak to you.